Replacing the screen is a non-trivial task with the Huddle 2. The glass is bonded to the LCD so you have to swap all of the components out of the broken screen into the replacement screen. The first thing you need to do is to remove the battery. There are four Phillips head screws keeping the battery in place and a white plastic connector attaching it to the motherboard. I normally remove this by hand as the power connector has two little tabs that you can wiggle until it releases. The important thing to remember is that the power cable needs to be pushed in fully when you replace the battery. I've repaired enough of these to have run into this problem a couple of times when I first started fixing them. If you're not sure, take some reference photos of the inside of the Huddle 2 before you start working on it. It's always a good idea to keep all of the screws in a little pot, which I'm actually doing off screen. The connector itself can be a little bit tricky and fiddly to remove. As you can see, I'm having a little bit of a struggle here removing the uh, connector from the device. But if you persevere with it, it normally pops out eventually uh, and then you can lift the battery out of the casing. At the time of recording this video, replacement Huddle 2 batteries can be purchased for about £8.99 uh, from Amazon or eBay. So once the battery is out, we can start removing the separate components and installing them in the new screen. Be warned, this can be a fiddly process. However, it's important to remember that these devices were mass produced on a production line, probably in China, which means they are relatively simple to take apart and reassemble. OK, so we've removed the battery. The next step is to remove the USB charging board and the bottom speaker. If you're replacing the screen on, on a broken Huddle 2, then you can do them both together, leaving the ribbon cable connected to the charging board. There are two Phillips head screws that need to be removed, one of which is covered by some black sticky backed fabric. As you can see, this can be difficult to remove and I'm having a real struggle with it here. Once you've removed it, keep it safe so you can put it back in place in the new screen. I'm not sure exactly what function it serves, but as it's been in every single huddle I've repaired, I'm sure it's there for a reason. So please bear with me as I finally remove it. As you can see, the second Phillips head screw is now visible. Once this is out, it's time to use a spudger tool to prise the speaker out. These are held in place with pleasantly weak adhesive. Enough will remain on the speaker for you to stick it into the new case. Lift the charging board, speaker and ribbon cable out in one piece. Now it's time to bring on the new screen and start the process of transferring the components over. All you need to do is repeat the process in reverse. Make sure you take care to position the charging board flush in the case. Put the Phillips head screws back in and reapply the black sticky backed fabric. We're now ready for the more challenging task of removing the motherboard. First we need to remove the second ribbon cable. This is connected to the motherboard via a micro connector with a flip lock mechanism. These are incredibly delicate, so I use a spudger tool to flip the white locking mechanism up. The other end is a pop connector, which you can gently pry off. Put the ribbon connector back into the new screen.
We're now ready to remove the motherboard. Start by gently flipping up the four micro connectors on the top of the motherboard. Then remove the four Phillips head screws. The motherboard will now lift out, but it will still be tethered to the case by the top speaker. Use the spudger tool to free the top speaker from the case. Put the front facing camera in first, making sure the little rubber ring is still attached to it. You can now fit the motherboard. This can be quite a fiddly process as you have to ensure the speaker is threaded behind the ribbon cables. Oops, I almost forgot to remove the back facing camera from the broken screen. This is attached to the case with a sticky strip of metal. Simply peel this off. OK, now we can connect the motherboard. Make sure all of the ribbon cables are where they should be, ready to reconnect them. Reconnect the ribbon cables, making sure they are fully inserted before locking them down with the clips. Put the four Phillips screws back.
try to avoid dropping screws onto the motherboard. Reconnect any remaining ribbon cables and push the clips down to secure them. Put the battery back in and secure it in place with the four Phillips screws. Ensure that the white connector for the battery is connected firmly. Put the case back on, fitting the side with the buttons first, making sure these are correctly positioned before you clip the case closed. Once you've confirmed that the Huddle 2 is working, get it on charge ready for testing. It's a good idea to test every feature after replacing the screen. For more information about Huddle 2 repairs, please visit our website at http colon forward slash forward slash www.huddle2.jellypie.co.uk. Many thanks for watching.